usually I wouldn't do a second video like this um, on a trade. And I think it's important to note, as I was reading, we had Dan Campbell and Brad Holmes come out and say some things about the Jeff Okuda trade. And I think it's important to talk about uh, why they decided to change course on this. Uh, earlier, I put out a video about um, the Detroit Lions make a huge trade. And, and I think the initial reaction, if you're like me, to the trade of Okuda for a fifth round pick, I think everyone's initial reaction whenever somebody does a trade is, oh, I wish they got more. But here's the reality. When you look at it, when you look at the production, regard, irregardless of where he was drafted, uh, that's about right. We got about the right thing. So then the question immediately switches over from, did we get enough to, was it worth it? And because you didn't have to trade Jeff. You didn't have to get rid of Okuda. You could have kept him on the roster. So what I want to do is look at what Brad Holmes said and why he said they traded Okuda. And then we can go back and we can view like if this change, of course, from a number three overall pick three years ago made sense for this Detroit Lions team. And I want to preface it with this. In Brad Holmes, we trust. We trust Brad Holmes. We trust in what he's doing. It's nice to have that GM, but it's also nice to hear from the team as to why. Why did they trade him? All right, so we know we're coming off a rough year. All right, we, we know that. Um, Brad Holmes said that as much. He said there's a lot of different areas that we can go, especially with the resources that we'll have available to us. Obviously, our defense was ranked 32nd. So, I mean, it's pretty obvious that we're going to have to utilize some resources and try and improve our defense. Um, we know he went out, signed three defensive backs, and man, oh man, did that change things for Jeff Okuda. All right. And he went on to say, Rich Eisen, uh, Brad Cam or Brad Campbell, <laughs> whoops, Dan Campbell went on the Rich Eisen show and he talked a lot. There's one swear, don't worry, I'll omit it. Uh, it's a family friendly show. Um, he said, it's not a bad one. Don't worry. Uh, he said, we knew we wanted to upgrade the secondary and we've been pleased with the upgrades we've made, man, bringing in Cam Sutton and Emmanuel Mosley, and then getting CJ Johnson from um, Philadelphia. We feel we've really beefed up that area and we still got Jerry Jacobs. We got Will Harris back. All right, so now there's five guys right there. He hasn't even mentioned Tracy Walker. He hasn't even mentioned Joseph. Campbell explained, which means that the Okuda to safety thing was never even in a, a thought. It, he kept it in the, in, the, in the cornerback room there. He said, so we've got a group and we feel, uh, or, and we just felt like, you know what? We felt pretty good with the additions that we made. He went on to say, and we really felt like at this time that it is probably best for us and Jeff, he continued. Okay, so let's pause there for a second. So we have two things, and then we'll get into the rest of what he said. The two things that we know about are that they felt like they had enough pieces in the room. They felt like they had four corners with the two new signings with Sutton and Mosley, and then you have Harris that they re-signed on a very inexpensive deal, and they still have Jacobs on, on the rookie deal. Um, so it's kind of interesting. Remember, Jacobs was an undrafted free agent. Remember, Will Harris, I believe, was a third-round pick safety. Uh, they're both playing corner ahead of the number three overall pick, Jeff Okuda, and I think they felt like that's where they're going to stay. I don't know what this was... I don't know what this was like behind the scenes, but they'll talk about, he'll talk about that a little bit in the rest of his quote. So the writing on the wall said, Jeff Okuda was our fifth corner. That's what it says. He was our fifth cornerback on the roster going into the season, maybe fourth. So they liked Jacobs more. They liked Harris. They felt good about it. Or maybe what they felt was that, you know what? The difference between Okuda, even if he was the third best corner, um, you're not going to play him in the slot. You're not. And so maybe what they felt was, hey, Will Harris got comfortable there. CJ can play the slot. So the difference on the outside at for a third corner between Jacobs and Okuda or between Harris and Okuda was not enough to warrant a $10 million um 
payday uh, this year. And maybe it was like, hey, if it's not enough work to a $10 million payday, then we'll take a fifth round pick because we've done all right. We've done all right with late round draft picks. So maybe we can find another quality player um, or starter in a later round. Why not? So Campbell went on to say a new change of scenery for him just to get a fresh start. I like that they're talking about Dan Campbell saying, hey, hey, like we're, we're thinking about him too. And I think when you look at where this trade is, where he goes, he it's a secondary that will absolutely have the ability to compete in right away to get playing time more than he would have here. It is a good situation for him. It's a good situation for Detroit. We say, hey, it wasn't working here. We don't have to keep answering questions about Jeff. You get to go play. I think Jeff will go to Atlanta and he'll have a pretty good season. I really do. I don't think he's just going to go there and be terrible. I think if he played here, he would have been improved. The problem is if Mosley and Sutton are healthy, he's not consistently playing. He would have to rely on one of them getting hurt in order to get starting reps on the outside because those, those guys are going to have it locked down. So like he needs to go to a place where he can get those starting reps. He'll be able to get that. Campbell went on to say, we felt really good about our guys. Look, man, I appreciate Jeff. Jeff was a pro. He came to work. He busted his butt, man. He worked at it. He was coming off an injury last year, and we just felt like, you know what? This is the right thing to do now. That's what he said. He's like, it's a change of scenery for him to get a fresh start. We felt really good about what we had. He was a pro. He busted his butt. He worked at it but it's just the right move for the organization right now. Like this is kind of what we all knew. Like injuries are part of the game. Is it fair that he was drafted in the COVID year? Probably not. I mean, there was over 200 other guys drafted that same year. Is it fair that he tore his Achilles? Probably not. Is it fair that he had um, what he had like core muscle surgery in his rookie year? Um, mm -hmm. That was bugging him since college? Probably not. Did he have the deck stacked against him? Probably. And what's nice now is he gets to be traded to Atlanta where there's no expectations on him. <clears throat> Atlanta is doing kind of similar to what we did when we got Charles Harris from Atlanta. We just signed him. But they're saying, you know what? This is a high draft pick. There's clear talent there. Maybe we can make the most out of it. I hope Jeff has a good career there. Just don't pick off Jared Goff anytime soon. And uh, he goes well for them. And whoever we draft at five is good. And we find a way to utilize the five million that we freed up in cap space this year. That's what I hope. All right. Uh, we'll see you on the next video. Um, awesome having y'all watch. Thank you so much. And uh, love the Lions. Make sure you watch the draft with us on the 27th of April. We'll be going live before the draft at 745 throughout the whole first round. You're there with us. Make it your spot. And uh, hit us in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe. See ya on the next one.